respected Sushant Babu, Mr. Das. My sincere apologies uh, that I got late. Normally, I'm never late. I'm always early. But today, somehow, uh, you know, because of heavy rain and other things, I got stuck. So once again, my apologies. It's uh, really wonderful to be in front of you and uh, share some of my thoughts. Uh, I am here as uh, the president of Compass. Uh, Compass is a computer association of Eastern India. It's a very strong, vibrant association of more than 350 self-employed professionals who are all in the ICT business. So many of them do hardware, many of them do system integration, many of them do training, many of them do products. So we've got a very um, diverse set of uh, entrepreneurs who have all been doing business, many of them over 25 years. So a very large number of people are employed by our members. In our estimate, um, more than 6,000 people are employed by our member companies. Many of them have become national. And Compass is one of the leading associations in the country which is created, uh, introduced best practices, especially in the channels. And we've been very instrumental in working with end customers as well as, you know, principal companies, brands and the government. You know, uh, this opportunity of getting two stalwarts of the state here, you know, I would like to talk about the SME business, what SMEs are, what our real challenges are. At the same time, I would like to tell you uh, what we are doing, uh, you know, the government, everybody expects the government to give them a red carpet and give everything. We have been in this state and we are very strong, you know, because when I started my IT business, uh, the, you know, at that time when I used to write software in Calcutta, you know, computers were literally not allowed in banks. You know, there was huge trade unionism at that time. You know, anybody who was in the computer business was a no-no, mostly in the government departments. From there, we have come a long way. And today, the new government, you know, has again got a major set of challenges, especially in terms of financing. And expecting them to roll out a red carpet, especially in terms of financial doling out, is not going to be possible. So we all understand this dark reality. And we welcome the government's intention to support the SMEs, the government intention to create, you know, especially uh, some interest in hardware because that's one area that we have been neglecting in our state. Uh, recently, in one of our programs, um, uh, the Honorable IT Minister Sri Partha Chatterjee was there and he straight away offered us uh, land to set up an IT hardware park. So we are very keen to start that project. In fact, uh, we have already initiated quite a number of initiatives in that area and it is a dream that we will be doing it. Compass will take the initiatives and member companies as well as people from other states have all been approached and we are also looking at overseas companies who come and set up a, a participate in this hardware park. So, uh, sir, I would like to assure you that this project will definitely come. Our uh, association members as well as several other associations we have approached. We are just not calling it a IT hardware park. We are calling it as a IT and electronics uh, park because today ICT and electronics, they are all together. So, we are now living in a world of convergence. So, most of the televisions you see, they are also consumer product at the same time, they are a product which is in, used in IT. Mobile phones are consumers at the same time used in IT. So, we are looking at the entire ICT and the electronic business and we are very confident that we will be able to bring in uh, some leading brands all by ourselves. You know, all that we want the government, is, the government to do is to ensure that whoever comes, they are given, you know, at least um, the minimum barriers to cross in order to start their business and start the production. We are not expecting anything. I would definitely like to share that, you know, it is a very, if we are able to get some support from the government, especially in the form of incentives for hardware manufacturing and assembly, we will be able to bring in very large investments into the state because today if you see uh, states like Goa, states like Himachal, even some of the northeastern states, they've got such a beautiful incentive policies. I know many friends of mine, they are all setting up manufacturing units in those states primarily to take advantage of the incentive that the tax break that these zones provide. So if West Bengal can also do something, you know, I think there will be a huge, uh, you know, inflow of investments. For example, if, uh, you know, whatever sales tax that is uh, supposed to be collected, if the government can say that, okay, you don't have to pay us the sales tax for 10 years, but start paying it after 10 years, whatever you collect. But your minimum investment has to be 100 crores. This has been done by one of the South Indian uh, states. 
you know, the investments will flow and a lot of companies will come because today all of us are under tremendous pressure of margins. You know, with this dollar, rupee and uh, with so much of international churn going on, every manufacturer wants to feel safe with his investments and at least wants some type of comfort so that, you know, there is some money which is going to be available which he can use when it's absolutely, uh, you know, the markets are in very bad condition. Uh, if you know, you know, we have about 2.6 crore SME companies in the country employing more than 6 crore people. And the bank funding that we get is a pittance compared to what the large companies get. The large companies create the maximum NPS. You must have seen some of the high-flying brands, you know, which are now going for restructuring. If you see the total bank loans which have been restructured in the uh, last financial year, that is the 31st March, about 40,000 crores of loans have been restructured. And out of that, most of it is belonging to the large companies. The SMEs really do not get their share of the public money which is to be invested in industries, whereas SMEs are responsible for almost 40% of the country's exports and 45% of the manpower output, that is the total output that we generate from the SME company is 45%. So I have been a champion for SME companies. I understand the challenges of SME companies and I work you know, very closely with my associates and so many other associations where we focus on how we can promote our small entrepreneurs to grow big. Uh, you know, if you look at the West Bengal scenario, I think uh, we are very glad that a lot of initiatives have been taken. But I would like to, you know, highlight two, three points which would be very useful to SME companies. SME companies don't get paid in time. Even if they get a subcontract, most of the subcontracts are back to back. Whereas today, if you see the type of statutory liabilities pressure which is created by the government, you know, the moment we raise an invoice, we have to deposit our taxes. We have to submit all our PF statements, all our ESI statements, all our tax statements before we can get payment. But the government doesn't pay. The, when I say government, it is not the government of West Bengal. I'm meaning all the public sector undertakings, all the state government departments. They don't pay for years. There are many cases where payments are held up for six years, but the government expects us to pay our provident fund, our sales tax, our service tax, everything in time. How is that possible? So it is very high time that all of us realized that there are certain stark realities in the SME world. In the SME world, financing is a big problem, payments getting stuck is a big problem. If you see the channel business today, the entire manufacturers, the distributors, today all of them leverage the SME companies in terms of reaching their sales targets. And the SME companies are absolutely stuck with payments. There is no payment discipline. A distributor does not give money if your check bounces once. Uh, does not give you any material. He stops billing. They've got systems. But the SMEs who are holding stocks, they are compelled to sell and compelled to take more material if they do not pick up the next month's target. So there is a lot of challenges with SMEs. So payments are a very big problem. So this is one area that we would definitely uh, like to address. In fact, in certain cases I've addressed, for example, in uh, the uh, West Bengal State Electricity Board, you know, they don't pay you for six months, but they expect you to clear all your statutory payments. And whatever statutory payments you have cleared, that also you don't get paid for six months. So how will a small company keep on funding, uh, you know, their manpower? Because most of these people employ hundreds of people whose wages they have to pay in time, their uh, all dues have to be paid to the government in time. So it's a very big problem. So I would like to see some simple reforms taking place, especially in the government of West Bengal. One is not to stop any SME payments. You can withhold 20%, 30%, whatever you want. But at least 70 to 80% of the payment should be released immediately or as soon as certain milestones have been achieved and agreed. And there should be no delay. There should be no uh, discussions on that. Whatever is required, there should be some payment should be held back. But the cash flow cycle has to be maintained. We see in most of the government departments, uh, you know, there is a challenge in terms of collecting payments. So that is one area which I would definitely like our policy makers and uh, leaders to take a view and support the SMEs there because that will make a huge impact. Uh, you know, if SMEs are insured of their cash flows, they will invest more, they will do well, they will survive more. There is another area which uh, I would like to address, which I have been talking in every single forum. Wherever I have met the minister, I have also told him that we definitely need a separate uh, way of 
reserving some business for SMEs because today most of the SMEs are doing the e-governance work in West Bengal. But the rate at which they are getting the contract, it is changing two, three hands and going to them. So why not at least reserve 10 to 20 percent of the work for SMEs, you know, as a, as, a, as a policy. For example, the government of India has now created a notification saying that if there is any local manufacturer for electronics, they should be given a price preference, which means if a, importer, if a foreign company is quoting, let's say, X rupees, and the uh, local company has quoted higher than X rupees, the local company should be given an option to at least match that price and pick up at least 20% of the orders because it calls for a lot of investments, a lot of training, a lot of manpower to create a hardware manufacturing setup. And in case we do not support these, um, you know, companies who are making these investments, you know, it will be very difficult at one point of time to decide that today we want to do hardware manufacturing. We need to create a culture of, you know, people, trained people being there. So there are some, uh, you know, major challenges that we have as a country. And in West Bengal, you know, because we did not have much, so there is a huge amount of opportunity. I see a lot of opportunity, in, especially in the hardware space. In the software space, it is infinite. Uh, I, as an as a angel investor and as a part of uh, Thai and as part of NASCOM, I come across so many companies, especially in the IT space, and they are doing excellent work. You know, if they are given a little amount of support, mentoring, and a little amount of encouragement by sort of looking at innovation which the government can use. I think we will have a lot of very good companies coming out of West Bengal. I meet a lot of young people who are very energetic and who are doing pioneering work. So it's very good to see a lot of work. You know, our Rebel Venture Fund is uh, one of the uh, funding arms in the state, especially for ICT companies. I'm glad to tell you that in the last um, almost uh, six months, there are more than eight companies who have got funded through the Webel Venture Fund and many of them have moved from one stage to another stage, uh, you know, for the funding. Our Honorable Minister had in last year, in our Thai program, he had promised that he would try to get an allocation of 50 crores for this year. So there we have requested that it should not be only for IT, it should also be for non-IT because there are a lot of non-IT projects also which are coming up in West Bengal, especially in the SME sector which are related to agro-based industry, which are related to manufacturing, which are related to product development, which are related to solar, um, you know, renewable energy. So many things are happening in this small space. Um, and if we are able to support these companies, I think we will be able to see a very vibrant, uh, you know, SME uh, market in uh, West Bengal. And as far as the government tenders and other things are concerned, I think uh, in West Bengal, you know, every SME has got an equal opportunity to participate. Only thing is your engagement model with the customer has to be a little deeper so that the customer knows you before you even quote. And if you are good at your job, I don't see any problems in West Bengal for you to win a job. And overall, I would say that there is a very large number of SME customers who are all looking for good IT solutions. Because today, the only way an SME has, can compete in the global marketplace is if they can do, adopt IT and if they can do business in the internet. Because Using the internet as a channel for sales, as a channel for communication, as a channel for product development, as a channel for collaboration is the cheapest way of, you know, getting you getting into the latest cutting edge technologies and getting into customer bases. So I think the internet adaptation amongst the SME is very good in certain areas because I, I, I know many people who started with me with a very small website who were making jute bags and today they have become global companies. They are supplying to all the... Um, you know, worldwide companies because they had an electronic commerce site, you know, selling jute bags. Similarly, in most of the other areas, you know, e-commerce is going to be a, a playing a very big role. So I think there's a good opportunity for all IT companies, especially to look at how SMEs can be helped in terms of leveraging ICT for their own business. And that's a huge market. And, um, you know, one, they are all looking for low cost, efficient solution which works. They do not want to wait, they do not want to invest two years and then wait for returns. They want to invest something, they want to see returns immediately and they want to invest more and more and the adaptation goes on. For example, we have seen many companies, you know, once they have IT into their lifeline, which means into their cash flows, the growth in terms of their IT investment is going phenomenally, especially we have seen it in retail, we have seen it in several of these money market companies. They are all highly computerized, Without that, they will not be able to handle the level of transactions that they are uh, seeing. So overall, I would say that the opportunities are fantastic. 
uh, government support, at least, you know, in terms of intention, the government is very clear that they would like to support SMEs. Government is uh, looking at creating policies and clusters. Uh, but I think it's very, very important for all, you know, entrepreneurs and SME companies to come forward and support. You know, I from my association can commit to you that we are all very strongly committed to building an IT and a hardware park in West Bengal. And uh, though, you know, it, it is a very tough call without having an incentive scheme to attract large, um, you know, brands. I think we, 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 whatever the government gives, we will take and we will request the government for some special incentives if possible. We are not looking for any cash advantage. All that we are saying is make it easy, make it simple. And if possible, whatever sales tax that is collected out of the manufacturing here, give us 10, 10 years so that we can pay it back after 10 years so that that money comes and contributes uh, to the growth and investment of this thing. Because today interest rates have gone up and um, you know there is a huge import component in uh, manufacturing electronics. So if you have to address all these things, there has to be some comfort, some cushion for somebody to put in, let's say, 10 crores in putting up a manufacturing facility here, or even 1 crore in putting up a manufacturing here. Why should somebody put it here? So we need to address some serious challenges which SMEs have got, and we need to work on a package by which we'll be guaranteed that there will be a flood of people who would like to set up West Bengal. I'm doing my work. I've done a lot of uh, interactions with companies across the country with various large manufacturers who have set up in Goa, Himachal and other places and they are all saying that we don't mind coming as long as we get a level playing field like what other states provide. So with these few words I would like to end my discussion. I wish you all um, very good business success this year and uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank War India who have been very aggressive. I have been with them in several states and uh, Mr. Deepak Sao would def definitely like to you know, congratulate and uh, highlight that he's got tremendous amount of energy and enthusiasm. In every state that he goes, you know, he, he becomes a person who is very local and he un tries to understand the, uh, the ground reality there and works closely with the partner community there, with the channel community there, with the government there. And I think that's a very good uh, way of contributing to this state. I've seen him in Orissa, I've seen him in North India as well. And it's very good, you know, we really require such um, agencies who are very uh, supportive and we would always uh, help all the media companies who want to do development and work in this state. We would definitely welcome you and we will give you extend, extend you all support that is required. So thank you very much and keep up the good work.